السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على حبيبنا حبيب رب العالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله Part three of this series, uh, the principles of religion, as we mentioned, uh, focuses on the praiseworthy character traits that would help us have a purified and a sound heart. And our aim with having this sound heart is to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and he is happy with us, he is pleased with us. Today's session is unique. It's about love. We, whoever recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will love him. And whoever recognizes Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will love him. The meaning of beloved is that the heart is inclined towards it. When this inclination becomes very intense, then this is referred to as ishq. And that's why we hear that this person has ishq to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ishq to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same way. If people recognize the world, if they if they have uh, uh, their heart inclined to it, then this is also another way of love. But our goal in this dunya is to gain the love of Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while we are practicing our love to them. So what are the causes which lead to love? If you ponder over the qualities due to which love for people is attained, you will find that there are three qualities. The first one is knowledge. The second is power. The third is freedom from faults and weaknesses. As for knowledge, this uh, if you want to love a person, then he should have a knowledge. He should possess knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his books. Uh, he should love Allah's cre cre creations. So this person has the knowledge. He knows who to love and what to love. Why is this important? There is a very important saying, a sahib sahib. The companion will draw you closer and nearer to whatever he believes. So if your companion loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loves Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and loves working to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is called a, a good companion, a rafiq salih But if a person loves dunya, loves uh, pleasure, does not care about uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is a person sahib su. So this person will lead the one whom he loves or the one who loves him to whatever, whatever being away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to have a person, a companion who has great love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is a true friend, who is 
uh, uh, the the person we really need in this life. So if we slip, that person will correct us. If we get away, he will get us back on the on the rain. As for the the power of this person, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed some type of power that will enable this man, this person, to control himself by restraining the nafs from any ba bad inclinations. And this power will enable the, this person by remaining steadfast on the straight path. So when they are in power over people, they, uh, they practice uh, justice. So they are not guided by their nafs. Whereas for the uh, for their purity, their internal was free from ignorance, free from stinginess, free from jealousy, free from bad characteristics and evil character. So this is the these are the qualities of the person who we would uh, like to love. A person who would get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is away from the power of the nafs. So we will enjoy the company of this person. We know that this person will keep us on the right track. He will not deviate us from the right track. So today, inshallah, we will stop by loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and loving the creatures of Allah. If we ask, why do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we love him because he deserves to be loved. It's not to gain Jannah and to be away from, from hellfire on the day of judgment. No. We love Allah because he is worthy of love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned two groups in the Quran. One group is those whom he loves and the other group are those whom he does not love so let's start by by those whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves in surah al-baqarah ayah 195 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ do good Indeed, Allah loves the doers of good. Later on in Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ Allah loves those who are constantly repentant. He loves those who always purify themselves. So now we have two categories. The first one is the one who... Uh, who are the doers of, of good and the second one are those who constantly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly purify themselves in surah Ali Imran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says بَلَا مَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ وَاتَّقَى فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ this is surah Ali Imran ayah 76 Yes, whoever fulfills the, his commitments and fear of Allah. Indeed, Allah loves those who fear him. 
So this is a third group whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. The other group, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ And when you have decided, then rely upon Allah. Depend on Allah. Indeed, Allah loves those who depend upon Him. Loves those who rely upon Him. We talked about depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the group who, who is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another group. فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَصْفَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Pardon them. Overlook their, their misdeeds. Allah loves the doers of good. So this is an indication that when, when you have husnul khuluq, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And who has husnul khuluq? The one who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does things, he pardons people because of his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does good because of his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that Allah would love him in return. Also, Allah loves وَإِنْ حَكَمْتَ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْقِسْطِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُخْسِطِينَ And if you judge, judge between them with justice. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about those whom he loves. Now, what is the other group? The other group is the, the group whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 190, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Do not transgress. Indeed, Allah does not like transgressors. There are limits, there are boundaries, there are rules. Do not, do not transgress. فَإِن تَوَلَّوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ If they turn away, then indeed Allah does not like the non-believers. So Ya Allah, we witness that we believe in you. We believe in the angels. We believe in all prophets. We believe in the day of judgment. We believe in the, in the qada and qadr, good or bad. We اللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not like the wrongdoers, the oppressors. Inna Allah la yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura. Allah does not like those who are self-deluding and boastful. You know why? This is another indication that this group of people, none, none will enter paradise. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. If he has a speck of pride in his heart. Also, Allah la yuhibbu man kana khawanan athima. Allah does not love those who who are sinful deceivers by habit. Allah does not like those who, who like to, to do corruption. So these are the two groups whom Allah loves and Allah does not love. Ya Allah, we ask you to be of the group of people whom you love so you will be pleased on the day of judgment. Now moving to the to loving our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
In fact, when people look at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu actually they are looking at us. Because whatever you we do, Muslims, this indicates that these are the followers of the Prophet. So people are looking at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through our actions, not through his reality. So when our deeds, when our actions are all good, and when our love is great to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we want to do whatever pleases him. And with this, by this, people will look highly at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they will see good manners in us. They will see good people in us. They, they will see everything good because we are following the footsteps of the best of the creation. And actually, the love towards Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not only by people, by the companions at his time. It was also by the stones. It was also by the mountains. It was also by the animals. Every creature loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to walk on the streets, he used to hear someone saying, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. So, Assalamu alayka, O Messenger of Allah. He would look around, there's no one. He would continue and he will hear the same, the same sound. So, everything around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stones, trees, everything around him would greet him. Because they loved him. Jabal Uhud. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Jabal Uhud. Jabal yuhibbuna wa nuhibbuhu. The mountain which loves us and we love this mountain. And there are many incidents about the love of all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, everything he has created in this world to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to start with, we start with Sayyidina, Muh Sayyidina Adam radiallahu an, when he ate of the tree and he, he knew that he, he wants Allah to forgive him. So he said to Allah, Ya Allah, by your love to Muhammad, I want you to forgive me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at Adam. He said, how do you know that I love Muhammad? He said, Ya Allah, when you created me, I looked up at the arsh, at the throne, and I, I, I read La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. And if he was not the best to be loved by you, you will not combine his name to your name. So by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Adam was forgiven. What is a, a special reason for the incident of Al-Mi'raj? Everyone knows that it was a sad year for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lost his uncle, he lost his uh, beloved wife, and uh, Allah wanted to, uh, uh, to please him. So there was the journey of Al-Isra and Mi'raj. Another reason for that. The angels up in the high realm 
looked at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, they, they were they were jealous of the people of earth because they have Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they are his companions because so he they they begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this was one of the reasons for Al-Mi'raj Now, once uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to uh, do his ceremony, to give his ceremony leaning on a trunk of a tree. And later on, the companions decided that let's build a pulpit to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that he would go up and he would give the ceremony and everyone will see him. What happened? This trunk of a tree started to weep, started to cry when he saw that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not, when he felt Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not leaning against him and he is on a pulpit. So what did Sayyidina Muhammad do? He stopped his uh, khutbah. He went down and he hugged. He hugged that tree, that trunk of a tree. And he said to the sahaba, he said to the companions, if I did not do that, then the trunk of the tree would, would have kept weeping and crying until the day of judgment. Look at the love. And look at the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, don't you wish to be that trunk so that you will have that hug? Subhanallah. Now, talking about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is something that would take days and days and days and days that it will fill up books and books and books if written. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved his ummah to the highest degree. Until on the day of judgment, what will happen? All the prophets will be sitting on their pulpits except for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who will, who will be so worried about his ummah and he will be going to hellfire and to, 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 to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to take out any of any person who said la ilaha illallah in dunya with, with confidence, with believing in it. So he will keep going back and forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he loves his ummah. The angels would, uh, would, would look at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The prophets would wish that they are of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. So... The, the more we learn about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more we feel that, that love he has for us. And how do we love him? We love him by following his sunnah. Because real love is to, to obey and to do the same way that you, your lover, you, you, you are on the same page of your lover. You love what he loves and you hate what he, lo what he hates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, مَن يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ He who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. So we have to follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi we have to be on the same track of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to be on the same straight path of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So how can we follow that? How can we do that? By knowing Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu We have to know how, how he lived as a husband how he lived as a father, how he lived as a grandfather, how he lived as a teacher, how he lived as a, a, a trainer, how he lived as a commander, how he lived as a friend. So the more we read about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more we fell in love with him. And also we have to be with those people who loved him. Because love transmits. Those who love Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will transmit their love to other people. And we have to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala always to give us the, to grant us the love of his Habib. And Allah said, Do'uni astajib lakum. He created he, he said, ask me and I will answer your calls. Allah did not leave his Habib whom he created and whom he loved for himself only. He, he allowed us to, to share his Habib. He allowed us to love him. But we have to know how to love him. When you know that your heart is Ha, uh, is filled up with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then remember that Allah has bestowed huge blessings upon you so thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for more when you thank him Allah will increase you because he said لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ if you thank me then I will increase you now, someone might say, what's, what's, what's the fruit of loving Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And how we love, how we love him. So the, the, the fruits would be sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So why we, why we say the roots? Why we send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Just to have the closeness of, say, uh, of place to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرُكُمْ عَلَيَّ صَلَاةً The closest of you to me on the day of judgment would be those who sent the most salawat upon me. And whoever sends blessings upon Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his blessings upon him. So you are sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah and his angels are sending salawat and salams to you. So what's the result of loving Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Al-mar'u ma'a man ahab. On the day of resurrection, you will be resurrected with the one whom you love. With the one whom you love, whom you loved in this dunya. And when you, when you pass away, the first thing after being in the grave, the angels will come and they will ask you, what do you say of this man? So you will see Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your grave. If you love him in this dunya, then you will immediately answer. When they ask you, who, what do you say of this man? You will say, yeah, Habibi, he is, he is my beloved. So, love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Know him, love him, because he will have intercession for us on the day of judgment. There are many ways of showing your love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people uh, celebrate celebrate the mawlid of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do you know that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam celebrated his birthday? You might say how? You know that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on Monday and he always fasted on Monday. 
of course, uh, Monday and Thursday. So when he was asked, why do you fast on Monday? What did he say? This is the day I was born in. So some people follow the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and fast Mondays. Some people celebrate his birth by reading, reciting the Mawlid. Some people would uh, 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 invite people over for dinner and uh, for, for food just for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They know that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has... Uh, uh, always fed the poor as always fed Ahlul Sufa so they do the same so this is loving Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina what did he do? who did he take with him? he took the best the most person he loves, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So you have to have someone you love in this dunya, someone to be your companion in, the, in this dunya. Now imagine you, imagine what happened during this journey from Mecca to Medina. Imagine what happened in the cave. They were in the cave hiding for a few days. What happened? The only thing that we we know is when Sayyidina uh, Abu Bakr said to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, that if only those non-believers who are by the cave, they look down, they will see us. So what was the answer? Ma dhannuka bithnayn, Allahu salisuhuma. What do you think of two? Allah is with them. Those are the two lovers. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for us Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and has sent us this uh, messenger. Rasulam min anfusikum. He is one of us. He is not an angel. He is one of us. So let's focus on the heart. Let's fill our heart with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But before we can fill our heart, we should, we should check our heart. Is it full, full to the extent that it will not be able to hold anything else? If this is the case, then we have to empty our heart. We have to empty our heart from loving dunya. We have to empty our heart from any, any bad characteristics, from any evil uh, uh, characters that might be in the heart, from any ha uh, sickness that get into the heart. So... One time, when, 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 this, when this heart is emptied, then we have to clean it. When we empty the heart, we say astaghfirullah so that we clean this heart. And then we, we say the durood, we say the salawat so that we make our heart shine. So, we are focusing on the heart. We're focusing on the love that should be in the heart. So when this heart is ready, it will be filled with the love of Allah, with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, with the love of Quran, with the love of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One time, a wise person was asked, what is the difference between someone who really loves and someone who's, who, who claims that he loves? He said, okay, I will show you. He, he uh, this wise person, invited people over for dinner. 
and those he started with the group who claimed to be lovers so he sat on the table and they sat also and he the the food that was on the table was soup okay different types of soups but what happened with with the, what what was it so special about this soup it was very delicious but what happened he the the spoons that they were supposed to eat the soup with were one meter long so imagine a spoon one meter long that you need to eat soup with it so this was the uh, condition that they have to eat the soup with this with this uh, uh, spoon. So they tried and they tried, and every time they will try, they'll spell this the the soup, and the soup will not reach their their uh, mouth, and they will spill it and. So they they went out of this uh, feast. They were very hungry. It ended there. The other day, this wise person said, "Now I'm gonna I'm gonna have another uh, dinner, and I am going to invite the people who really know what love is." who really practice love. So, those uh, guests arrived and the same food, soup, with long, very long spoons. So what happened? Each one of them took his spoon, he filled it with soup, and he... Uh, stretched his hand and fed the person in front of him. So this is what happened. They all were fed. They all were full. And they all thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did the, the wise person say? He said, whoever thinks, whoever thinks that when the uh, table is set up, the table of dunya is set up, whenever he feels that he wants to feed himself only, then he will be hungry all his life. And whoever thinks that he should feed another person, then both of them will be full. So whoever gives is the winner. Whoever gives, who practice, whoever practice real love, then he is the winner. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you will have true love until until, uh, so none of you will have true faith, true belief, until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those whom he loves and to make us of those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When someone loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves that person. And when someone is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will happen? Allah will call Jibreel alayhi salam and he will tell him, Oh Jibreel, I love so and so person. So Jibreel, you love this person. So Jibreel will love this person. Then Jibreel will go to the high realm and he will announce it. Allah loves so and so. So you love this person. This is true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So, as we said, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can only be achieved when we prefer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over everything else. We must love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than we love our parents, our children, our spouses, our friends, our wealth. And Allah said it. If your, if your parents, children, siblings, spouses, extended family, the wealth you have acquired, the trade you fear you, you, you will, will decline, and the homes you cherish, if all these are more beloved to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and struggling in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his command. So he warns us, none should be loved by us more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can achieve his love when he is preferred over everything. And the Sahaba understood, understood this love and they practiced it. They gave all their money to Sayyidina Muhammad They wanted to, to, to sacrifice their lives for the life of Sayyidina Muhammad Abu Bakr radiallahu an was the, the, the best person to show love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by all means. All his actions prove the love. It's not just mere words. It's action. So now you might say, how do we know if we truly love Allah? How? Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, say if you sincerely love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. For Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So we love you, Ya Allah. And we want to increase our love to you, Ya Allah. We want to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a journey. It's a long journey. We have to be on that journey. So... Ya Allah, we ask you to give us the, the ways to show us, to guide us to how we love you. We love Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, but we express our being unable to love him when we say, when we want to send salawat, we show that we don't know how to send salawat. So we ask you, Ya Allah, to send him the salawat he deserves because we say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We ask you, Ya Allah, to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad to, to perform the salawat for us. We don't know how to thank Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad We don't know how to, to, to send salawat to him. So we ask you, Ya Allah, to do that for us. He's the most beloved to you. And he is our beloved prophet. So we ask you, Ya Allah, to resurrect, uh, to, 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 to resurrect us with the one whom we love. Ya Arham ar -Rahimin. We ask you, Ya Allah, to bestow your love upon us. Ya Arham ar -Rahimin. We know that Loving you and loving Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best and the greatest of all love, Ya Allah. It fills the heart and it gives light to our life, Ya Allah. And until we meet next week, inshallah, I send my salam and your salam to our beloved 
Prophet Sayyidna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.